due to the success of APSI's first ever Trees and Woodlands seminar in 2020, we've received requests to hold a second seminar due to the ongoing high profile of Trees and Woodlands on the local, national and indeed global agendas, including all local authorities. That although woodland cover is gradually increasing across the UK, uh, woodland wildlife is in decline. And that begs the question of why that is. And there's several different reasons for that. Um, I mean, woodland cover has increased quite dramatically over the last 100 years in the UK, and nearly tripled, actually. Um, however, a lot of that has been with non-native um, forestry plantations. And also existing native woodlands have become increasingly isolated and in poor ecological condition because we're um, losing some of the, you know, a lot of the trees outside woodlands through lots of different reasons. So trees have been planted across this landscape and livestock has been removed to, um, to increase um, surface roughness so that there's more vegetation to slow and capture water. Um, and then also other interventions around peat bogs, restoring them with woody dams like the one you see in the picture there. And all of these interventions together have led um, in just eight years to a measurable decrease in the speed of water flow and also a positive response from biodiversity in the area. So increased population of black grouse, um, increased plant diversity and other species as well benefiting. National Tree Map is what we call an off the shelf data set. It has already been created um, and it's available. We first created the um, baseline data for our National Tree Map in 2009-2010. So on the back of all that work in 2019, Birmingham gained global tree city status uh, on those policy changes. This is something that's administered by um, the Arbor Day Foundation in America, but is backed by the uh, United Nations Farming and Infrastructure, uh, Farming and Agriculture Organization. Um, the role of trees and uh, it, they play they play in mitigating and adapting, adaptation, adapting to climate change was highlighted in the climate change declaration and the city's plan for route to net zero and higher profile for trees and wider GI in planning docs, uh, environmental resilience and environmental justice. You'll often see that uh, information, there could be a specific highway system, there could be a specific trees system, there could be access databases, spreadsheets. Worst case scenario, it's on a piece of paper or it's in somebody's head. So Alloy was really born to address that. So we found the departments were looking to say, OK, we need to remove the amount of systems that we've currently got and we need to get it into a situation where we can get everything into one place so we can analyse that data. With Alloy, you get all your data in one central place and you've got a standardised data model that you want to reflect within the Alloy platform. You can create that using the designer. Um, you can use the mapping, the integrated mapping, to create your tree zones for ownership, etc. You don't need to go to the central GIS system. You've got integral mapping, whether you're on the web system or whether you're on mobile. The, the community forest will be open access uh, in the main. Um, it'll be easily accessible to the public to encourage recreation and relaxation. And I'll come on to some of the importance of that um, in terms of the outcomes and, and the, uh, the, the drivers behind the, the, the proposal in a, in a, in a, in a minute. But central to the design of this will be a network of, of new um, cycleways, footpaths linking to existing routes um, and enabling people to explore the forest through improved active travel and commuter links around the city. Um, we have nature based solutions at the heart of the community forest, um, which will include natural flood management and um, reintroduction of, of species, for example, beavers, um, wooded buffer strips bordering rivers and roads, um, reducing pollution, and improving the connectivity of woodland habitats. So how do we create it? Uh, so first of all, it's it's around the, the planning side, which is really important to select the right site and then to, to really understand the soil um, structure and hydrology, uh, because the forest composition is very much based on that, um, as well as uh, the native species. And, and we do use reference forests um, to do that. 
Uh, we then designed the forests uh, to um, achieve the best possible um, in that space. Um, sometimes we do create pathways, uh, sometimes we include furniture uh, as a classroom, so it very much depends on the location of the forest and what the forest is being used for. But you can see that it's not a, a huge space. Um, tennis court size, it was an unused piece of ground. So this is this is what it looks like. This is what it looked like a couple of couple of weeks ago. It went in right at the very end of March. I think we we're quite excited, really, that, that this produces uh, a, a, a dense and complex ecosystem, which will be different from uh, some of the uh, normal tree planting that we might do. That would we be much more spaced, provide much more opportunity uh, for different types of environmental education. So uh, on that score, um, we're all council, all part of resolution of um, almost exactly two years ago, July 2019, an environment and climate emergency um, was declared because of extreme concern about the sort of issues I mentioned before, being a peninsula and what people were seeing. It was, so it was an all party um, agreement that we need to we need to crack on with with, uh, with our response. We also didn't want to copy hackneyed or um, cliche design I'm, I'm sure we've all seen the sort of two services in a himalayan birch on the street corner so design we saw as being front and center of getting get, getting this project delivered successfully so just to summarize our, our year one community action plan and um, i've given you the main points here so at the moment we're in production of a, an online hub which um, will host all, all our information from the council side is also being fed into by our, our local groups who can you know sort of post about their events and their activities at the moment we've got uh, about seven community planting projects lined up for this coming season and just listed here we've got the um, the campaigns that we we're going to roll out over the next 12 months two of these are, are already in motion so eight years ago in 2012 nine years now three hexwood meadow was a barley field very little biodiversity value, incredibly fertile. And a lot of you will know that fertility is one of the biggest barriers to um, successful habitat creation, whether that's woodland or meadow. Um, competitive species dominate wherever there's a lot of fertility in the ground and it outcompetes those flowers. Next slide, please. Involves the community right from the get-go with this project. Next slide, please. Um, and the other thing is by sowing a wild, just a commercial wildflower grassland mix in, across the site before planting the trees, instead of having what a visitor described to me the other day is, instead of having the classic tree guard cemetery appearance, you had a site that people were visiting in quite large numbers from year one. Uh, I hope that this sentiment has again provided some practical help in achieving and highlighting uh, so these uh, different methodologies and finally I'd like to thank all of today's speakers uh, for their excellent presentations as well as all of today's delegates for supporting this event it's been really 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 well attended and I think you're ongoing and thanks for all your ongoing involvement and support for APSI too.